Okay, let's look at this problem that involves DTFT and DFT. We are given a sequence xn equals 2 to the minus n un. And we are told there is another sequence yn, which has a finite duration of length 10. And we are told that the 10 point DFT of yn is given by 10 equally spaced samples of the DTFT of xn. Using this information, we need to find yn. So let's start solving the problem. Our first order of business is we need to find the DTFT of x. So we use the DTFT formula. n from minus infinity to infinity, xn, e to the minus j omega n. Now xn goes only from 0 to infinity, so we replace that 2 to the minus n, e to the minus j omega n, and just like the trick in most DTFT and DFT problems, we try to write it in terms of an infinite geometric series, so we write it as 2 to the minus 1, e to the minus j omega raised to the power n. So this is now in the form of n from 0 to infinity r to the n which is a geometric series infinite one and this is equal to 1 over 1 minus r as long as absolute value of r is less than 1. So for us this is r we have to see whether this is less than 1 that is easy to see absolute value of this is simply 2 to the minus 1 which is less than 1. So we can use our geometric series formula and that will be equal to 1 over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j omega. So that's first part of the problem. Now we are told that the DFT, the 10 point DFT of yn which is denoted by y of k that is simply samples of the DTFT of x, an infinite duration signal. So we replace omega equal to 2 pi k over 10, which is pi k by 5. So what we get is 1 over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j pi k over 5. Now we need to find the 10 point inverse DFT of YK will give us Y of N. Now notice that even though we sample the DTFT of X the fact that x is an infinite duration sequence, we are not going to get back x, we'll get something different. That is called aliasing in time when we are sampling in frequency. It's sort of the dual of aliasing in frequency that we get when we are sampling a signal that is not band limited. So you can try to use the inverse DFT formula, that will be a longer route. I'll just remind you a common formula. So remember, you might have done a similar problem. If not, that's okay. The endpoint DFT of 2 to the minus. So if you are given a sequence, so given s of n equal to 2 to the minus 1, uh, 2 to the minus n, n from 0 up to n minus 1. If you look at, if you are given this sequence, then the dft, the n point dft of that is e to the minus j 2 pi k over n times n and you have to use the finite geometric series formula so you get n from 0 to n minus 1 
2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j 2 pi k over capital N raised to the power n and then you solve that you will get 1 minus 2 to the minus n e to the minus j 2 pi k over n times n over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j 2 pi k over n and these two n's cancel and e to the minus j 2 pi k this is equal to 1 because it is just a multiple of 2 pi so what you get is 1 minus 2 to the minus capital N over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j 2 pi k over capital N so what I want you to remember is this relationship which you may have solved in a previous context and if you have not then we just derived it so if you look at this and if I plug in n equals 10 so what I see is for n equals 10 the 10 point DFT or the 10 point DFT of 2 to the minus n un minus un minus 10 so which is a 10 point sequence that is 1 minus 2 to the minus 10 over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j pi k by 5 okay so I just plugged in n equals to 10 in this expression and I get this so now let's compare the two things so we need to find the inverse dft of this expression the boxed expression we know that the dft of 2 to the minus 10 un minus un minus 10 is this expression if we compare the two box expressions let's call this star and this double star if we compare the two things we see that star is simply double star divided by the numerator quantity so if the df if the inverse dft of this thing is 2 to the minus n un minus un minus 10 what is the inverse dft of this star well we simply divide it by the numerator so inverse dft of 1 over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j pi k by 5 let's be clear that's 10 point is equal to inverse dft of 1 minus 2 to the minus 10 over 1 minus 2 to the minus 1 e to the minus j pi k by 5 divided by 1 minus 2 to the minus 10 well that this is a just a scalar quantity so I'll take that back so that is simply 2 to the minus 1 u n minus u n minus 10 divided by 1 minus 2 to the minus 10 where this is due to this quantity the scalar 1 over 1, one minus 2 to the minus 10 so the upshot is that when we sampled the DTFT of Xn which is an infinite duration sequence 
we get back a sequence yn that is yn equals 2 to the minus n over 1 minus 2 to the minus 10 for n from 0 up to 9 and 0 otherwise. So we get back a sequence that is first of all a finite duration sequence and secondly that sequence is not the same as my original sequence even within the n from 0 to t uh, 9 range. In fact, what we are getting is time earliest versions of my original sequence. So, if you remember the steps, we started with x of e to the j omega, computed that using geometric series, then we sampled the DF, DTFT of x to get the DFT of y, then we had to remember this expression for a general uh, sequence of the form 2 to the minus n, finite length. What is the DFT of that? Based upon that, we simply use the fact that DFT is a linear transform. So if we are given a pair, if we, are, if we know this pair, so this pair is known to us, we are looking for inverse DFT of this quantity. Well, that is simply the double star quantity divided by 1 minus 2 to the minus 10. So the inverse DFT of this will be this boxed region, 2 to the minus n, un minus un minus 10, divided by 1 minus 2 to the minus 10.